Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Woo. He is risen. Woo. Woo. He is risen indeed is the correct response, I believe. Not that I'm from Church of England, is that? I guess it's everywhere, right? All right. It's beautiful to have you all here. It's wonderful to see a few new faces out there and wonderful to see a few old faces as well. <laughs> beautiful. Well, thank you very much, Lee, for the egg games. I thought that went quite well, you know, I enjoyed that. All right, so this morning we're going to look at new life, resurrection. So I'll begin with a prayer. Heavenly Father, dear Lord Jesus, Lord, we thank you for your son. We thank you that he came and died on the cross for us. We thank you that he rose again. And we thank you for all that that means for us in our lives today. Lord, we thank you for each other, and we thank you that you are at work in our lives, working through us as we reach out and touch the lives of others with your love, your grace, and your mercy. So, Lord, speak to us through this message today. Soften our hearts. Prepare us to receive from you exactly what it is that you have to say to each and every one of us in the specific place on our journey that we are on. So, Lord, we thank you that you have your hands on our lives, and we thank you that you speak to us in this way, Lord. Amen. Amen. It's wonderful to have new life in here, right? Congratulations, Damien and Gemma. What a busy year you've had, isn't it? New life. <laughs> I should think. Let's... <laughs> That's what they all say to you. All right. Yeah, amen, Damien. Preach it, mate. Tell them. All right, new life. You know, this time of year really is wonderful in so many ways. Spring is beginning to spring. Ah, oh, isn't it wonderful? The sunshine. The sun is starting to shine, not just on our faces, but in our hearts. Isn't it beautiful? I do love this time of year. People are just happier when the sun's out, and I'm all about joy and happiness. There is something really special about this season. It's the time when throughout nature, we see new life. The trees begin to transform from being dry old sticks to life-giving, leaf-wearing, fruit-bearing images of life. <laughs> you don't have to apologise. I love the heckling from the little one. <laughs> the rabbits have been acting like rabbits. And as a result, bunnies are hopping around all over the countryside. In fact, many of the animals have been busy creating new life too. We're about to see insects and bugs everywhere. Don't you love insects and bugs in summer? Baby cows, or if you like, calves, are being born. Baby sheeps, otherwise known as lambs, coming into the world. Baby chickens, known as chicks, start pecking and cheeping all over the place. It turns out reproduction is seasonal across all living organisms, from plants to insects to reptiles to birds and mammals, and even in us human beings. Earth's environment is seasonal. Above or below the equator, the year is structured by spring, summer, autumn, and winter. God gave all organisms strategies to reproduce at the time of year that will maximise their reproductive success. He gave all organisms the awareness to reproduce at a time where their offspring would most likely succeed. Can this be a coincidence that God chose this special time of the year to bring us the celebration of new life that is Easter? Isn't it incredible when God's hand is on every element of everything? The egg is at the very center of life for almost all animals. 
reptiles, chickens, birds, fish, spiders, even mammals have an egg somewhere in their reproductive cycle. New life really can be seen in the image of the egg. For us, as followers of Jesus, we celebrate Easter because of the new life that is offered in the resurrection of Jesus. Jesus' suffering, Jesus' death on the cross, and finally the victory that is Jesus' resurrection make new life for us all possible, as beautifully illustrated by Damien in his testimony and the wonderful family that we now have here at church. New life is possible through the resurrection of Christ. Today is the day that we get excited because this is the day Jesus' burial tomb was found empty. Jesus had been crucified. He had been tortured in the most horrific and painful way. And finally, he had been put to death up on that cross. Luke, Matthew and Mark all record something amazing that happened during Jesus' crucifixion. The sun actually failed to shine for three whole hours as Jesus' physical body gave up its life force. What a sign from above of the magnitude of this event on the cross. You know, this past Friday, in bright sunshine, some of us took part in the walk of witness here in Ingate Stone. You know, I'm, I'm not sure that everyone in here understands and knows what a walk of witness looks like. It's beautiful. We, we gathered here um, and sang some songs. And then we moved down to uh, the URC church where we sang again and we carried a cross, um, a large wooden cross, so that everyone everywhere could see that this group of people were representing Christ and the cross. It was great to join together with other churches to remember this incredible day in history. And then we walked over to the parish church. This time, Pat carried the cross for us. It was beautiful. We gathered outside the church and sang, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. I love that song. We sang it in a slightly different tune, which threw me a little bit. Uh, following this, the vicar bathed in bright sunshine, read from the Bible. He read the description of the crucifixion, and as he read the part where darkness came over the whole earth, a huge cloud actually covered the sun at that very moment. It was nuts, it was. <laughs> Incredibly, we got just the tiniest glimpse of what it might have been like on the day that Jesus hung upon the cross. You know, I don't know if I'll ever forget that really poignant moment outside that historic church where so many people have worshipped and followed Christ over so many years as we gathered together holding a wooden cross and the cloud came over and it actually, it didn't go dark, but you could get a real sense of what it must have been like as, as Jesus finally gave those final words. You know, I looked up in that moment at the darkened, side, at the darkened sky in recognition of kind of what was going on, a, a real special moment from God and a blessing for all of us that were there, and just said thank you, just thank you for what was really subtle but so powerful. In Luke 23, 46, Jesus says, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. His final words. Good Friday is the day Jesus died on the cross. From there he was taken and laid to rest in a tomb. A huge stone was rolled across the opening of the tomb. We saw it in the cartoon at the beginning. And a legally binding seal was placed on the stone across the entrance to make sure that nobody messed with the body and with the tomb. A team of highly skilled Roman guards were placed at the entrance to make sure that nobody messed with the body or messed with the tomb. 
these measures were taken because Jesus had told everybody that he was going to rise from the grave. He told everybody, when I go, I'll be getting up again. And the Romans knew this. They knew the threat that it posed, and so they made sure that this body did not come out of this tomb. In Mark 9, 30 to 32, and also in Matthew 17, 20 to 23, Jesus speaks as follows. The Son of Man is going to be betrayed into the hands of men. They will kill him, and on the third day he will be raised to life. This is Jesus speaking, telling people about what is going to happen. And we know what happened, right? He is risen. Come on. He is risen. All right, amen. Matthew 28, 1 to 6, reads as follows. After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and, going to the tomb, rolled back the tombstone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Three very important words here. The correct response is, he is risen indeed. Three very important words here. <laughs> he is risen. He is risen indeed. Thank you. Jesus rose from the grave. He overcame death so that we might do the same. This is really important. He overcame death so that we might do the same. Death in the Bible is referring to spiritual death, not in the physical way that we associate death. Spiritual death is simply separation from God, what we experience when we don't walk hand in hand with him. The muddle that we get ourselves into without his guiding hand, his guiding light in our lives, is what spiritual death looks like. Jesus died a miserable death so that we could live an incredible life. Jesus died the most agonizing, miserably painful death so that we could live the most exciting, purpose-filled, comfort-filled, peace-filled life. Now, I'm not saying that life is going to be without troubles if you give your life to Christ. I am saying God will find a way through it for you. This is the reality of a life with Christ. If I use the picture of Moses and the Red Sea, God didn't take away the sea. God doesn't take away our troubles. He simply makes a path through them in the way that he did for the Israelites. He parted the sea that they might find a way through. This is what he does in our lives. You will still have troubles. You will still have trials and tribulations. The difference, as Damien said, is that you have somebody to guide you, somebody to comfort you, somebody to shuffle the pack in your favour. Incredible when you start to walk hand in hand with Jesus and see the incredible transformation that you see in your own life and that you begin to see in those around you. If we're willing to believe in Jesus' life, if we're willing to believe in Jesus' death, and if we're willing to believe in Jesus' resurrection, if we're willing to turn away from our old ways, if we're willing to follow him and make his ways our ways, we can go from spiritual death to incredible life. Simply put, this is life without God to life with God. It's as easy as that. Jesus' resurrection is a picture of the resurrection we can experience. Resurrection from spiritual death. 
through to spiritual life, to life in abundance, to life in full. Resurrection and restoration of the relationship that we were created to be in with the creator, that is God. He created us to be in relationship with him from the very beginning. A couple of people made a little bit of a muddle of things and we were separated. Jesus comes that we might be reunited. There's a brilliant song called Because He Lives. The lyrics go like this. Do you know, I'm so tempted to try and sing it, but I'm not going to do that to you. (laughs) No chance. God sent his son, they called him Jesus. He came to love, heal and forgive. He bled and died to buy my pardon. An empty grave is there to prove my saviour lives. And because he lives, I can face tomorrow. What a line. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future and life is worth the living just because he lives. What? Resurrection. Because he rose, my life is worth the living. I have purpose. I have fulfillment. I have a life worth living because he lives. And so at Easter... We give each other Easter eggs. This little chocolate egg does signify new life. The new life available to us all if we want it. There is more to the Easter egg than just this this little chocolate egg. It's also a picture of the empty tomb. This egg represents the risen Christ. This empty egg represents the empty tomb and all that the empty tomb means for us. This empty tomb, this empty egg brings us the revelation that is the resurrection and the new life that we have access to because of the resurrection. So next time you crack open an Easter egg and find absolutely nothing inside it, be excited, be grateful for the nothing inside your egg. Nothing inside means everything inside. Nothing inside means everything inside. I tell you as somebody that has experienced this new life, this transformation from spiritual death to spiritual life, the nothing inside means everything inside to me. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives... Life is worth the living. For some today might be a day where you question, what can I do to encounter this new life, this transformation, this peace, this guiding hand, this comforter, this sustainer? How can I get me some of that? I see it, I see it in Damien, I see it in many of the guys here, I see it in you, Sid. Where do I get it from? How do I go about accessing it? Where's the tablet? Where's the linkedus? Where's the gear? Bring it, I want a bit of that. For all of us, every day is a great a great day to walk more closely with the risen Christ. For some of you, it may be today you want to take that step. Today you want to invite Christ in. For some of you, it may may be that the resurrection of Jesus 
stirs up a resurrection within your, your current Christian walk. I think for all of us, we can do better to know him a little more nearly and a little more dearly. All of us have stuff to come to the cross with. All of us have stuff to come and say sorry for. So if you don't know Jesus yet, and you'd like a little bit or a lot of transformation in your life, if you'd like peace in the storm, please join me in reading aloud this wonderful prayer. So uh, can I encourage all of you to read aloud this wonderful prayer? I'll read a line, and if you read it afterwards, and if you're one of the people that has never invited Christ into your life, if you've never known the peace and the comfort of having someone part the seas for you, then just come up and talk to me afterwards. Come up and talk to Pastor Lee afterwards. And I encourage you, like, I have come from utter darkness, absolute chaos and an unmanageability. For those of you that don't know me, I was a heroin and a crack addict. I have over 100 convictions. I've spent years in prison, and I became a Christian. I, I said this prayer when I was in prison. And from that moment forward, I felt a freedom that I'd never, ever felt in my life. And I was locked up 23 hours a day in a cell. Now, if inviting Christ into my life can do that for me, goodness knows what he can do for you. So step out in faith, trust, and, and just think about what these words are saying and, and say these words. Do you know what? It will be the best day you ever had. It will be the best Easter you ever had as you begin to walk out new life. At the beginning, you saw this little picture of a little shoot just bursting through from the earth with the sun shining on it. That's what it's like. We're called born again Christians for a reason. So follow me in this prayer. I'm going to say a line and then I encourage all of you to say a line with me. Dear God, thank you that you love me and have a good plan and purpose for my life. I'm sorry for ignoring you and doing things my way. I realize now that my sin has hurt you and the people around me, and for this, I am truly sorry. Thank you. Jesus, that you gave your life for me and took the punishment for my sin. Please forgive me and help me now by the power of your Holy Spirit as I decide to live only for you. Please forgive me. 